When it comes to studying for exams, particularly difficult exams, we run into a problem. They're difficult. But you see, the thing we need to understand is why they're difficult, because if we understand the problem, we can come up with a better solution, right? So why are exams difficult? Obviously, there isn't a single answer, but if you look for the hardest exams across the world, such as the MCAT, the USMLE, and the multi-state bar examination, you'll realize the issue lies not in one challenge, but two. First, the amount of topics you have to study and remember, and second, the depth at which you have to learn them. So take as an example the USMLE, the exam doctors take to enter residency in the United States. This exam finds its difficulty not in the fact that they evaluate, I don't know, let's say 12 different kinds of leukemias and lymphomas, but in the fact that they evaluate ridiculous in-depth details about them, all the way from their presentation and treatment to the specific mutations associated to each type of malignancy. And although people usually think of this these challenges are just part of learning, the fact of the matter is that these are two fundamentally different skills that demand different and often opposite strategies. On the one hand, deep learning requires time, time that is typically invested in a single subject. And on the other hand, memory requires repetition, and actually multiple bouts of repetition, first after a few hours, then after a few days, and then after a few weeks or months. So there's the paradox. If you want to learn enough about a subject, you need to take your time learning it. But the more subject you try to learn and the more deeply you try to learn them, the less time you have to repeat them. And by that same token, the more time you invest repeating multiple subjects, the less time you have to learn them properly. This is called the understand memorize paradox. And it's a problem I'm sure we've all experienced while studying for a difficult exam. This obviously doesn't apply for those small tests that only evaluate something like two topics, but it is a huge problem for anything else with more complexity. So what can we do? Accept that we're destined to forget everything we learn, prioritize superficial memory over in-depth learning, try to find a middle spot, or just pray because this doesn't have a solution. Well, the first thing we can do is realize that although fundamentally different, there are overlapping areas between learning and memorizing. And you can train yourself with advanced learning techniques to make the most out of these areas and have a better shot at remembering subjects even though you don't repeat them with the required frequency. These techniques are the same ones that memory champions use to win contests, and you can totally learn how to use them to study for the subjects of your exams. Now, in this video, I'm not gonna explain them because, well, it would take too much time, but in case you're really interested, you can totally check a more in-depth explanation in my masterclass on the science of effective learning, which you can find out in Skillshare. And you know what? That's actually a really nice segue into the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare, in case you don't know, is a learning community where you can learn pretty much anything you want, from study-related stuff like my masterclass to productivity, finances, culinary, creative endeavors, note-taking applications, like you name it. For instance, I recently wanted to learn how to use Procreate, an iPad application used to illustrate, and I was amazed at how easy it was for me to find a suitable class and start learning. I literally just typed Procreate, included my expertise level, did a little bit of browsing to see which classes were the best one for my needs, and that was it. In a matter of minutes, I was already learning with an introductory class to Procreate by Brooke Glasser, which in case you want my opinion, was top notch and showed me things I didn't even knew were possible in an iPad. Just like Brooke's class, every class in his school series is of extremely high quality. And over there, you'll find extremely engaging teachers, the possibility to leave questions, to start discussions, to create projects, to post your own classes, and overall to jumpstart your learning process. And so if you want to check out Brooke's class, my class, or any other class in the platform, all you need to do is use the link in the description to get a one month free trial in Skillshare. In that way, you too can start exploring your creativity today. Thanks Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Okay, moving on, we have the second solution, which is using a study technique called interleaving. Interleaving states that learning is maximized when a study is distributed over several days or weeks instead of over a single dedicated session. So for instance, instead of sitting today for three hours trying to learn everything there is about leukemias, I just study for 30 minutes today, then 30 minutes tomorrow, then 30 in a few days, then in a few weeks. And by doing so, I basically take the single session and I spread it out. By doing this, each study session becomes itself not only a learning opportunity, but also an opportunity to repeat and remember. And although this doesn't replace a formal space repetition system like Anki or flashcards, it is a better way to study nonetheless. 
Again, if you want more information on the matter, check out the masterclass. Okay, moving on, we have the third solution you can try, which is to change your perspective, to stop seeing the graph as something that forces us to be either here or here, and instead think of it as the representation of the natural progression of an effective study system. What do I mean with this? Well, let me put it like this. If tomorrow morning I start studying for an exam of which I know nothing of, I'm going to locate myself in this part of the graph in the beginning. And so I'll dedicate most of my time to learn and comprehend and build my bases. I'm not going to focus so much on the details because I know that I'm going to forget them either way. So instead, I'll just focus on comprehending the first principles. And what I'll do then is create a system that gradually changes my approach from understanding and building my bases to remembering the details. And if I do this properly, everything that I did over here will make my time over here 10 times easier. And that is actually how I organize my study for exams such as the USMLE. I always set two study phases. In both of them, I studied through question marks because I think that's the most efficient way to go about standardized testing. But in the first phase, I take my time with the questions. I take my time to read them, to learn from them, to notice the important words, the important details, to process the information, to really understand what I'm reading. And then in the second phase, I do a second pass of all the questions I found difficult. But in this phase, I spend much less time reading and processing and more time just repeating hundreds of topics very rapidly and very efficiently, which as you may guess, optimizes for memory. An approach like this may seem inferior to just trying to understand and memorize everything at the same time. But contrary to that approach, this one is realistic. All right, and finally, the last solution which discussed is not wasting more time than necessary. Because yes, having study phases opens up the possibility of taking more time to learn and more time to repeat. But that doesn't mean that you should then spend an eternity reviewing the subjects in your learning phase. After all, remember that the idea of the first phase is to build the bases you'll need for the second one. Sure, you'll forget the details and that's okay, but the point is to remember the bases. And if you spend too much time building the bases, don't be surprised if by the time you start the second phase, you've already lost like half of the stuff you constructed. So this is all to say that you try to be as effective as you can in all of your learning phases. And you can do this by just following a couple of rules of thumb. First one, focus on the relevant subjects. Remember that for most standardized exams, the Pareto principle applies. The Pareto principle basically explains that 20% of the subjects represent 80% of all of the questions. And second, don't waste your time with ineffective study techniques, such as taking notes to review later. If you want to learn more about why this is such an inefficient technique and how you might modify it to see better results, make sure to watch this video over here. I'll see you guys in the next one.